Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. If any of you caught me on Instagram about a half hour ago, you know that I'm doing some mail art tonight. This is an envelope I created earlier today, and I was like, you know what? I want to make this envelope all over again. And so that's what we're going to do together tonight. I'm going to make a card that's going to go in the envelope, and then I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to start. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with this paper. I used it in my live on Friday. So I'm going to be using this paper again. And just for a reminder, I'm sorry it's sold out everywhere, but this, seriously, it's so amazing. I love this paper. This is the Ink Drops Vivid 12 by 12 pad from Craft Consortium. And I've gone through and I've already picked a pattern for tonight. And I'm going to be using the same pattern for the envelope as on the card. So this is the paper I've chosen for the envelope. I thought this kind of blue and purple and red was just amazing. So um, this is the envelope. I'll come back to this later. But this is for the actual card. So I have a pre-folded 5x7 card here, and this pattern paper is cut to 4x6. This really is one of my most favorite adhesives. It is just so super strong. This is Tombow Extreme Adhesive. It's linked down below. And I'm going to put this directly in the center. Just like that. Oh, isn't that paper gorgeous? Got some vellum cut down right here. I just need to pick a size of heart. I mean, I could do this really big heart. In fact, you know what? The die I'm going to be using today is this one right here. So maybe, maybe a larger one would be a good idea. I think I want to kind of hang off the edge, and I will be cutting the edge off. Um, I like that. So it can kind of overlap the edge of the heart a little bit. So we're going to cut the vellum out of this heart. The embossing folder I'm going to use, which I have not ever used this particular thickness of embossing folder in my electronic die cutting machine, so this will be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to cut this portion out of black. In fact, they're both coming out of black now that I think about it. I'm going to paint one in gold because I want it to match the gold that I'll be using on the envelope. So I'm cutting both out of black cardstock. This is Pitch Black Cardstock from Hero Arts. Oh good, I was hoping it would stay in the paper. Do you see that where it says lots of love? Before we assemble the card together, I'm just going to paint this. So I've got some Yuli watercolors. This is the color Oscar. I'm going to put one drop of water in there. And get my paintbrush wet. And you're going to get the best results with pearlescent paints like this or mica paints when you really let the water soak into the paint. If I was going to start painting with this right now, it would be kind of watery. Like, that's actually not that bad. But <laughs> um, we want it even thicker than that. Okay, and I like that it's still in the paper because then I can just go like this. I find that these paints look best over a dark surface. So that's why I am using black cardstock instead of just cutting it out of white. All right, we're going to put the lots of love on that, and then it's just going to be on the heart. It shouldn't take very long to dry. This glue, for giving you a little bit of wiggle time, it does dry, you know, pretty quickly because it's going to be a really simple card. All right, I think I, <clears throat> I think I wanted about about right there. I'm going to use some foam tape and just put two lines of foam tape on the back. And now I can put adhesive 
directly on the vellum and that will hold it onto the card. I'm going to use my Tombow Extreme Adhesive. And then all of my adhesive is hidden. Okay, to finish off this card, it's looking a little unfinished <laughs> at this very moment. So I'm going to take my white gel pen. This is like my go-to. If it's looking unfinished, I'll just add like a white dash border around the outer edge and it just like pulls everything together. It's like my little tip for you. I don't want to add much more because I think it would detract from the beautiful pattern paper. Super simple card and I'm going to clean up a little bit and then we're going to go on to the mail art. When I make custom envelopes. Oh, I got to zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing. When I make custom envelopes, I use the 123 punch board from Wear Memory Keepers. This is an older version that I, you might be able to find it for sale in some places, but for the most part, the versions that are being sold now are um, like a cream color, but it's the same exact punch board. So on the inside of the punch board, on the inside of the cover, you're going to have this graph here that shows the measurements you need for when you make your envelope. So let me just come up here. You guys can see this. So up here under five by seven, it says that my paper should be nine and seven eighths. And then just remember this four and one eighth. We'll use that in a minute here. But for now, the paper is nine and seven eighths. So I've cut my pattern paper to nine and seven eighths. What I'm doing today for my mail art, you could definitely do with, you know, any other pattern paper that you have, like in your stash. I think it probably looks a little bit better for patterns that have like bigger areas like this, um, as opposed to something that has like a really tiny, fussy pattern. So the measurement that was over here, remember that? It was uh, four and one eighths. That's what you're gonna match up here. So four and one eighths, bringing my paper in and I'm gonna match this top corner with the measurement. So four and one eighths, and you're gonna do two things. You're gonna punch and you're gonna score. So I'm punching and then I'm gonna score starting from the bottom of these two lines. This paper isn't super, super thick, so I'm trying to be careful. I don't want to cut the paper, I just wanna score it. And if you're worried about like, I can't feel the groove, I can't get it in there, practice a little bit. You'll be able to tell, like you'll get a better grasp on it once you practice a little bit. Okay, can you see that score line right there? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this score line and it has this envelope score groove. If you guys can read that, it's kind of small on screen. But you're just gonna match up that score line with this opening on the far left of the punch. And sometimes if you have a good score line in there, you can kind of wiggle it in and you'll feel when the score line that you put in, you'll feel it fall into that groove. I don't have a very deep score line today because this paper's pretty thin. So I'm just going to try to look in the lie and kind of um, line up my score line with this little nub here on the edge. So now I'm going to do my two steps again. I'm going to punch and I'm going to score. at the beginning this is the envelope I'm recreating this is Monica submitted her address earlier in the month so she's gonna be getting an envelope in the mail too and you guys like confession I have envelopes that I've had done for like six seven eight months that I haven't mailed out so yeah, I'll be mailing some out soon okay <laughs> so the way that I discovered it was easiest way to do this was to go ahead and um, write their name and then just paint over the top.
now I'm going to take um, a Marvy La Plume pen. I've done this with a Tombow marker as well. I think any kind of water-based marker would work for this. But I've noticed that when you go over the edges of the lettering, it looks almost like it's um, going to put black over the gold. But then it's almost like the gold resists it and repels it. So, I mean, I'm being careful, but I'm not being like super, super careful as I go around. white gel pen and work on the street address. thing I did before I did postage was I wanted to add a little bit of a gray shadow. So I'm using the Mild Liner Brush Pens from Zebra. This nice gray shade is super, super light, so it makes it really subtle. So for example, on this one, the shadow is really subtle. It's not really, really dark. You can see it a little bit more on this end as well. So I just kind of add it in wherever I think there would be a shadow. And I like to go over it a few times so that it's a little bit more visible. And that just gives it a little bit of a shadow. It's more obvious on the address part. The return address, I should say. Okay, because I used a watercolor on these, your best bet is to seal it with some Distress Microglaze. Let me grab some, got some over here. Distress Microglaze sort of just puts like a really thin coating over wherever you apply it. But it also makes it really slick. Part of that is when they cancel your stamps, like they stamp over the stamps so you can't use them again. And they can't do that if you put the glaze over the postage. So I like to use a mini round blending tool for this because it fits right inside the jar. Just dip it in there. Hold on, I forgot. I like to put down a paper towel. Because we're gonna go off the edges here. Okay, I'm gonna put this one aside and we'll work on this one first. And I'm just going to start applying it in circles. And I'm going right over everything. 
the first time I used this, I was concerned. I'm like, is that going to like rub off any of my design? And it doesn't. Okay. Can you see that there's a little bit of a sheen on the paper now? That's the Distress Micro Glaze. Now, you're going to have a sheen on your paper probably for about a day. It takes some time to dry, but eventually it just soaks into the paper and that's when it's going to be resistant to moisture and it's going to protect everything underneath. And then I'm going to grab another bit of paper towel. What you do is you just ball up your paper towel and you just buff that in. And it just takes away any of the excess so it'll dry a little bit faster. You do get a little bit of ink coming off with it, but it doesn't smear or smudge anything, I promise. Your project will be safe. Okay. So those are the envelopes and the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this whole entire process. I think these are so, so fun. I love everything from beginning to end, from making the card to addressing the envelope and putting on the postage. And a big thank you to Monica and Judy and for allowing me to use your addresses on my envelopes. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back very soon with another video. Until then, thank you so much for watching.